All right, this is the Sunday where the sermon is going to be the last one for my honeymoon in here. It's how you make yourself unpopular. So if I hurt anybody's feelings before I say it right there, I apologize already. I blame it on the staff. They said, you need to be vocal. You've been quiet way too long, way too long about what's going on right now. Would you pray with me? Lord, may the meditations of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable in your sight. Our Lord, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. There's this um, little place, <clears throat> excuse me, in Italy, actually in front of the coast of Italy. It's called Lampedusa. We have some very good friends there, Methodists. And we've watched them. That's five years ago, and four years ago, and three years ago, and they're still there. And it's peaking back up, how they would call us and say, what are we going to do about it? There's boat, no, don't call them boats, let's say some rubber boats and some rafts floating by our Mediterranean Sea every week. And they're literally drowning in front of our eyes. And our church is full, and we see him, and we want to rescue more, and we want to do more, and we're exhausted. And besides being exhausted and we can't do more, it's that anger that's suddenly boiling up within us because they are setting this up. They know exactly with that boat they can't make it over there. They're from Morocco. They're from Ethiopia. Some of them came all the way from Russia down there, from Africa to come back up here. What are we going to do about it? We want to rescue the whole world and we can't do it anymore. It's the worst. What do we do with a situation like that? I will never forget these are wonderful colleagues and really people who have their senses together and how they were calling us up and say, do something, give us a good word about something that makes sense in a situation, a dilemma like that right now. It was Thursday night this week, and the call came in to our parsonage, and of course, it was one of these emergency people from the county, and they said, Pastor Miller, George, my husband is Adele Cavario, and said, do something. <clears throat> he said, we took 137 in a tiny little church this week. We're done. Some of us are involved. Literally, you saw the news, they're dumping him on the bus stop in Doniana. No money, no diapers, no nothing with him, no cell phone, no communication. And the anger started bubbling up. What is going on in the world right now that we are there? Do we want to rescue? What are we going to do about this? And I don't want to spoil your Mother's Day graduation day. Stephen Minister's Recognition Day, but maybe it fits in our celebration today that we don't have to be quiet. If we're talking about 500 people being dumped into Las Cruces every day right now, and the city literally has collapsed. And you know it all, and I want to just bring it out there as if some of us would say, let's just send them back home, you know. That's a setup. Let's just send them back over. Maybe Juarez can do something with them. Ask Arturo, he will tell you, right, how trashed up Juarez is right now. They're coming here and they stink and they steal and they rob and they lie. You know, her, did you hear about the kids that are not even their kids? They are recycled to bring them here to get into the country. They won't know about our democracy. They won't know. They will never make it up here. And over 90% get sent back anyways. What are we going to do about it? I want to send them home right now. My anger is bubbling up. Talk to the ranchers up on the border. What are they going through right now? And yes, we know, then comes this politically correct answer and say, well, they're legally here. That's not illegal, right? They're coming here because they're seeking asylum. And then we process them. We're trying to get them out of Las Cruces as fast as we can. And nobody, no mayor, no city, not even the state of New Mexico said, hey, here we are, come to us, right? They're here already. We know all that. But the emotions are there, are you honest? And then comes the other part of us and says, look, 
I read it in the Bible, there is hospitality cities, sanctuary cities. We need to be, we need to do the right thing. Bring them all. We've been bored before that anyways. University didn't know what to do before they did that, right? And El Cabario didn't know what to do with them. Let's just forget about ramps and forget about visiting people in the hospitals and doing a grief group or AAs or forget the choir on. Everybody just bring them all here because this is important now. Food bank, tutoring across the street, whatever we do, because now we have an important mission. And the ones who will collapse and see a collapsed health system and the ones who see that suddenly it's not so safe anymore around here because there's not even border patrol checkpoints anymore up there. They're all being down here. They will say, hey, what? I hear my friends from Lampedusa, from southern Italy. It's like a rerun in history. What are we going to do now? I wonder what Dorcas would have done. She was a lady of good works. Charity. I wonder what she would have done when she heard that Peter is in the neighbor town before she died. Dorcas, her Aramaic name was Tabita. It sounds a little bit like Talita Kumi. Talita Kumi is what Jesus said to that girl when he raised her from the dead in the gospel. Remember that? What would she have said? No, she didn't have to deal with refugees, but I'm sure they had their own crises back then where there's a hundred of them who are dying, where there's a hundreds who need help right now, a hundreds who need a better system so that everybody gets processed and that we will be in a safe place wherever we go. I think she would have said to Peter over there, Peter, stay right where you are. You don't need to come when I die. Just do what you do in front of your face, what you see there. He just healed a paralyzed person. And Peter... For one of the very few times, I know I was hard on Peter here in the last couple of weeks, knows what to do at that moment. He goes because someone called him and said, could you come? He knows about all the other people who need healing right now, who are not dead yet. He's going over. He remembers very well. One time his memory works and says, I remember how Jesus came to my mother-in-law's house. Do you remember that one? She was dead. And how he came in there. That moment will stay with me forever. That's a Mother's Day story, right? And so Peter grabs this Mother's Day experience and takes it back to that neighbor village rare at the coast and goes and visits Dorcas in the upper room and he throws everybody out. No big party, no showcase, but just one-to-one -to, -one to be with that one person. And he goes on his knees and he starts praying. That's what Peter does at that moment. Marsha, where is Marsha? She's outside dealing with someone. But Trudy, Judith, Dennis, sounds a little bit like a Stephen minister recipe, right? One on one, walking with one person because he or she needs it right now and here, not saving the whole world at once. And when there are literally still some boats going down, either because it's a setup or not, who will decide? I will walk with one person, no matter who it is and where they come from, for here and now at that moment. George, my husband, was calling when talking with Omkor to see what are we going to do about emergency relief at that moment. And the man on the other side said, you know, listen up, do what you do and do it well. Do that one thing in front of your steps and do it well. Person, if someone has called you to a Dorcas, to someone who is dying, to someone who is dealing with destruction, to someone who is dealing with, I don't know where this is going, but it's not from God, I will go and tend and be part of this person's walk until transformation is coming up, and that's what Peter does. Jesus has promised it to everybody, no matter what you do. If you do it one-on-one -on -one and you follow me, you can heal the broken. 
You can rescue the ones who are in, in prison. You can be with the ones who are in addiction. You can help the ones who are out there and not sure whether they're going to finish their studies because they have no plan for their lives. You can be with the ones who are dealing with half-broken marriages and the ones who see there's failure and I'm shameful about what happened in my life. That's what Peter remembered. I'll do it well at that one person in front of my eyes right now and here, and I don't care who it is. When my husband hung up on this call with Umkor, there was this little boy, and he just literally had walked into that church downtown, one of these stranded people who didn't know, but someone knew. He was about a toddler, three years old, and he cried and cried and cried and cried. We're not sure if the one who was with him was a relative or a father. And I can already see his face as I look, 20 years from now, if he stays in the country, what's going to happen to him? And who is he going to be to keep the safety here together? George didn't know what to do, but he found the animal crackers. Animal crackers always do the trick. Kurt, do you have it? This is the office. There's a hundred people running around. There's the health guys, there's the travel agents, there's the ones who try to get people for cooking set up. This is one big room, but he's walking into the main office and he just crashed on that chair. George called me up and said, you know, I've got a new customer here. He's dead asleep. He found safety. I'm not saying that's the right thing to do, but I heard Dorcas again. I heard her, and I looked around me, and I heard all the comments. I hear the people who say, I'm scared to death what's happening to our country if all these strangers happen. Stay here. I see Peters everywhere who will say, I will walk with one person like a mother does. Do you remember the good mothers that you had in your life? Or the moments where you had the highlight and were like a Stephen Minister mother? When you just make, you sit down there, you sit down there, and now I'm going to take care of you and get you a Band-Aid. Do you know? Do you know this kind of work? That's what we need to do. There will be some of us who will be walking out there, and they will go and say, I'm going to pick up one Border Patrol guy who's coming home at night exhausted and doesn't know what to do because it's overwhelming, whatever he's facing. And I will pray for that person that he stays safe and that his marriage will still be okay. There will be someone who will go and say, I'm going to take my wife out to dinner tonight, and I will just ask her for forgiveness for all the things I threw in her face and the same thing she did to me, because I know that Jesus taught us I'm the resurrection and life, and it's as valuable as someone who is trying to rescue that world. That's my world. There's someone of us who will say, I will go and do that one hospital visit that I try to avoid, because it's going to be too hard and I'll see someone leaving. But I will do it. I will walk along because he said, I'm the resurrection and life. I can hear someone who says, I'm going to go down to Honduras and Guatemala and trying to find someone who will train with me people down there so people don't have to run anymore and find one safe place in a place where they go back. I can hear the ones who will go out to our campus and go to all the colleagues of you, Jordan, that you met on the way to, to graduation. The ones who said, I will not make it. I won't have the right tuition. Or I have to watch my siblings at home. One of the biggest problems as we hear is the children who break up when they're going to college and they will never graduate. And I will take her or him under my wing. And that's as valuable. Let the boat sink around me, but take that one person with me and say, the Lord has said, I am risen, I am risen indeed. We have our hands full, and it's going to be beautiful. And we're going to still see around us a lot of destruction. Do you remember this sheet? The ones who were here at Easter? We preached on it, and we celebrated it on Easter Sunday that Christ was not in the tomb anymore, but what was folded up was the linens, as we heard in John. And it was the symbol for us to say, we don't need the linens of death and keeping it together anymore. We will start at one point and not be judgmental at that point and just do what God puts in our lap and do it well. And some will work this way, and some will work the other way. But in the end of the day, we will listen to what the Gospel of John told us right there. We don't need to look away anymore. 
We don't need to keep it under the carpet and be quiet about it because we want to be politically correct. We want to just see, Lord, help us take the linens away. Make life be real, and the Lord who will protect us and walk with us like a Stephen minister will be the one who said, I'm resurrection and life, and nobody will be snatched out of my hand. Did you hear it this morning? It's a beautiful time to be in mission as Methodists. It's a beautiful and a challenging time because we will see miracles happening all around us. Some of us came after the Bible study when we dealt with the Apostle 9 story on Thursday and said, what about, why not the other person, the person that meant a lot in my life? Why did she not get rescued before she died? Why is there so much dying? Why is there so much injustice around us? And we can only watch the miracles that are happening right here and now. And it's in God's hand that he will equip one person everywhere around us to take care of the mess right in front of our feet. I'm so glad that we are not in charge, are you? I'm so glad that I can wave our graduates off today and that I know that you will be in God's hands and that God will equip you for that one ministry in your life where I said, I'm going to be the best I'm going to go from death to resurrection every day. That's what we Methodists do. That then the morning said, here is another day that I did not deserve, but you gave it to me, Lord, and I'm going to use it well for whatever is in front of my feet. And sometimes the animal crackers will do the trick. You should have been here on Friday night when our children from BBLC were walking over a beautiful bridge here, they graduated from preschool. I mean, it was breathtaking. Every child, I don't know about you, Betty, right? Is she going to make it or not? They're like this high, and they're walking over this bridge. That's challenging. If I would ask you to come up here and just walk across here, right? <gasps> but when they were halfway there, they saw their teacher on the other side, the one who helped them to grow and to precious and to believe in him or her, and they ran right through. Right, Gary? It was amazing. That's what I want for us. Jacob, Jordan, for all our graduates, for all of us who are in the making, for all of us who are fleeing from something, trying to look for one safe home, for a place, a house built on rocks, as you sang it this morning. And then we'll have lots to do, and we'll celebrate on the way, and we make sure that nobody gets exhausted, and that we're not getting impressed and and paralyzed by the big news all around us. Do one thing well and leave the glory and the empowerment up to God. And in the end of the day, it'll be a beautiful, beautiful paradise that the Lord our God will create for you. I'm so glad that I haven't graduated yet, but I'm glad that I get to recognize our Stephen ministers today because you remind us we're going to walk one-on-one, -on -one, very quietly, with one person, because the Lord has said, I'm resurrection and life, and there's no more destruction, no more signs of death anywhere, no matter in which part of the business you're active. And if you still talk to me afterwards, I'm very grateful. But in the meantime, we know but the one who is in charge will keep our minds and our hearts in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Would you pray with me? Lord, some of us have experiences of mothers who knew exactly to pick out that one kid who needed it the most, who needed a Band-Aid, who needed a hug, who needed some direction and boundaries or just an animal cracker? Would you give us that call that we walk along one person and that we do it well and that you will take care of the, of the rest? Would you give us that power that we hold and stand in the gap, all the dilemmas that are facing us, that we put in our prayers the rancher up on the mesa, on the border, 
the people down there who do not know how to do politics well, the people who are here suffering in our hospitals and the ones who can't pay their bill and are afraid that the more people are coming, the less they get their service. Would you be with the ones who are struggling with personal situations in this room? Would you be with our graduates that they strive and become good leaders to get that one call and that they can do it well? Thank you, Lord, for trusting us, for exposing us to challenges, and that you're still in charge anywhere, somewhere between Lampedusa in Italy and Las Cruces on the border. In your name we pray. Amen.